Hi, everyone. Um, lovely to see so many of you here today. Um, I don't really have very many slides. Um, I kind of decided, because I'm so new in the role, that um, I would like to sort of be able to get some ideas from you as well about um, what I should be doing. <laughs> um, because actually, um, I've, I've got... Uh, well, I'll tell you a bit about me. Um, so I've been nursing for 11 years, and eight of those years I've been working in haematology and a little bit of oncology. Um, so my background is very much in haematology. So I've worked on the haematology ward, and um, I've worked in research, which was the oncology side, so the early phase team. And, and just before starting this role, I was in the day treatment unit. Um, so administering chemotherapy to patients, haematology patients, um, and supportive care um, for outpatients. So, um, so I'm now um, just covering Leanne Palmer, who many of you will know, um, who was the clinical nurse specialist um, in this role before me. She's gone off to um, have a baby. Uh, so I'm just covering her while she's on maternity leave. So um, I'm, I'm I'm, I'm willing to take lots of difficult questions. I don't know if I'll be able to answer them. Um, but really what I would like to do is just have a little bit of a discussion about what my role is. I can tell you a bit about how I feel it's shaping up to be. But also, I would be really grateful if you can tell me some things that you feel you need. Um, and um, because ultimately, my role is to be there to support patients through the diagnosis of CLL and throughout their journey with it, essentially. Um, so for me to be able to come along and meet lots of people who are experiencing um, going through this journey is really um, you know, a privilege for me. That's why I wanted to come, even though I've only been in the role such a short amount of time. Um, but obviously, if there are questions that I can't answer today, I will endeavour to find out an answer for you. I know you've already um, seen Anna today, who's given you a really good overview of the disease and the disease process and the treatments that are currently being given. I'm not going to go into too much detail anymore about that unless there's things that you particularly want to know about. Um, I was just going to talk more about my role and the role as a CNS in general and how it's kind of come about and how it's going to be, you know, um, helpful, hopefully, to you as you um, are being treated or being in a community living with um, CLL. Um, so, let me just put on the next slide. So, what is a clinical nurse specialist? What do people feel that a clinical nurse specialist is there for? Does anyone want to put in? Yes. Yes. I mean, that's... That's absolutely it. It's kind of the first thing I was going to say is that being a point of contact, um, it's kind of a Department of Health initiative that everybody who has a diagnosis of a cancer has access to a clinical nurse specialist. So that is, that is the ideal situation, that you have someone who is essentially your key worker, that is your person that you can pick up the phone to and say, actually, I, I, I'm struggling with this, or I need to know about that, or, you know, I, I feel I'm out of the loop with what's going on. Um, it's being that point of contact, and that is really the key thing um, as a clinical nurse specialist that we're um, trying to achieve, is being someone who's, who's there. Um, so that's really really, really important. Um, and you also mentioned being unwell. Um, definitely, one of the things that we're also trying to do, and one of the major, I guess, um, parts of the role again, is trying to avoid patients having to come into hospital 
as an emergency admission or an admission because they're so unwell. Particularly with CLL patients, um, a lot of you are, who are currently sort of active surveillance rather than having treatment um, are living in the community and not necessarily coming into hospital and um, being able to manage as much as we can before it comes to a point where you're really unwell and have to come into hospital and, uh, and dealt with in that sense, um, it's, it's much better if we can avoid that and we can be that person that actually said, oh, something might be happening now. You phone up and say, this has been happening. Should, should I be worried about it? I think it actually it just creates that buffer zone to be able to say, you know, a clinical nurse specialist would say, oh, maybe you need to go and have some bloods taken or maybe you just need to see your GP about that. And I think that's, um, you know, definitely something that we want to um, be able to improve on um, because it's never nice to have to be rushed into hospital and have treatment with people who don't necessarily know your your background. Okay. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to mention? Yes, thank you. Such a good point. I think um, in terms of the holistic needs assessment, so for those of you who aren't necessarily familiar with it, it's a real buzzword in treatment of cancer right now is kind of being able to um, give an opportunity for everyone to express what they feel they need and to, for the nurse specialist to actually then make a plan that you work to that will help kind of deal with the things that you're having to, you know, help deal with the things that you're, you're coping with at home, outside. So far, it's not, it's not necessarily something that is front of mind. And I think we need to work better on that, definitely. And I see that particularly if you're on watch and wait, which probably a lot of you are, it feels like you're remote and it feels like you haven't got someone that is listening to you about your needs but there are needs and I think we need to be much better at reaching out and getting those needs from you and saying okay oh, you're not coming into hospital to be seen very often and you're not having to be treated um, for anything perhaps even related to CLL perhaps there's other things that you're being treated for but you're sti that's still in the background and that's still something that um, is impacting on you daily and I think we really need to um, improve that and that's that's something that I think all of the CNS's in the team feel passionate about and it's it's gradually coming into the way of thinking about how we uh, improve um, the service for uh, for all patients but for CLL patients I think in particular and really you should have as soon as you're diagnosed with CLL, that's, that's a really, really key point. You do have access to me or Leanne or whoever, and we are at the end of the phone on an email if you need to talk to us. And if you feel that you're not, you feel remote from what is happening, then please do ask. Um, it would, it would, it would be great if people came to me and said, actually, I, I'm not sure what I need, but perhaps we could just sit down and talk about it, because I think that would be really great, because quite often, as you can imagine, we're just dealing day to day with the things which are pressing. And, um, and that's not to say that any need is greater than another, but it's about being able to manage that in a, in a, in a, you know, um, 
a very you know, organized way to make sure that we're not missing out on those needs, which aren't the right ones that are pushing on us. So that would be really helpful. Does anyone else? Yep, yeah, thank you. Do you have, ever have the opportunity to sit in on the first consultation <coughs> with a diagnosed patient? Because that's often crucial. They often go there on their own. Yes. And then they wander out afterwards. Yeah. And it would be hugely beneficial under those circumstances to have a sympathetic voice there. Yeah. But perhaps afterwards could just take them outside and do what you do best. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I know of one case when it just tends to happen. Yes. In one university hospital. Yeah. But I don't think it's universal. Okay. No. Um, so, certainly, um, I attend um, every clinic that, that, that happens. So, Dr. Shu's clinic, um, I attend. There's, there is between one and three doctors seeing patients simultaneously. So Dr. Shu and her registrars, David and Neve at the moment, who have, if anyone's familiar with Oxford. Um, so sometimes there can be a crossover, but certainly the priority for any of the CNSs is to be in with patients that are newly diagnosed. And we will, we will aim for that because um, it's very difficult. We understand in that scenario for both the patient or if there's someone with them to ask a question. Everything goes out of your mind, and we know that. And we do make an effort to say, you know, these are my contact details. You're going to walk out of here and have a question. Please do come back to me. But it isn't always that easy, you know. But, you know, we do urge people to do that because it's so many times something has been taken on board and other things haven't and we totally understand that and and certainly my priority when I go to clinic is I look through the list is anyone new is anyone is anyone going to be hearing about this for the first time potentially and as we quite often know uh, with CLL it's an incidental diagnosis you've you've gone for a blood test or something else and your doctor then says leukemia and, you know, it's, or, they, or that bit is missing. And that's another scenario that happens. Someone walks into the haematology um, clinic and isn't really sure while that, why they're there. Um, so we really hope that we can help with that scenario. You know, I know it's difficult and, you know, me being there isn't going to change that. But... We want to try and help with that scenario too. So, yeah, certainly. So, you just think if it's newly diagnosed, that sort of the issue. I mean, I'm just coming out of the hospital and I'm now here and I'm a doctor and I'm sure that's the case. Yeah. Because how British are blind. But even though I'm sort of a few years down the road, I'm still watching my own terminology. Some days you get a boy who's just been with those struggling to get his cloud open up. And you think, yeah. Yeah. And then there's another time, right, because you can say, okay, yeah. those days that come, and there's no accounting when those days are going to happen. It just seems like a false time. Do you think that picking up the phone to someone would be something that you would do on one of those days? I mean, actually, when I saw Amishu for the first time, yeah. they would forget the truth of the lady when they said she didn't need starting. So I didn't actually Oh, didn't you? Sorry about yeah, that. It was unfortunate. Yeah. But it's those days, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, I hear that a lot. And I, you know, yes, we are busy, but we will always endeavor to give you a call back, regardless of what it is. So many times I pick up a message on my phone, because I only work three days, by the way, so, but there is a voicemail there all the time. And as soon as I pick a message up on the phone, it goes on my list to call back in the same day. 
So I do aim to do that. And so many times I hear, it's not urgent, but could you just give me a call back? And I think, actually, you've put thought into picking up the phone and talking to me. There's a, there's a good reason. And that's how I see it. That you. No. Yeah. And, and hopefully we can fill that void, or at least we can. The other part of the role is really about signposting, perhaps, potentially, where that void could be filled. Um, not always. It's, it's sometimes tricky. To, there isn't a service that quite matches up. But we do get to know about things that are happening in the locality, support groups, um, you know, listening services, befriending, um, just being able to talk to someone, arranging something to go and see someone at Maggie's about, you know, some, someone to listen. Um, but we're always happy to listen. And I think, um, you know, okay, you don't want to be calling every day, but somebody has put thought into, actually, I, need to, I, think, I, need to, I think I need to make a phone call. You know, that, that can sometimes take a lot, and, and I am aware of that, you know. And, and so I think, you know, in the instances where you, you are having that time, it, you know, it, this is where the holistic needs assessment could, could come in. If we had, like, a, a game plan of how we deal with that, that moment, then that could be helpful. And everybody deals with it differently, and, we're, you know, I'm aware of that. So, um, you know... If, if you can reach out to me with what you feel your needs are, not always so easy to say, but, um, you know, I might have heard it before, I might not, but I'm, I'm willing to try and help. So, yeah. Yes. Sorry, how am I doing for time? Okay. So, I'll just move on to just after... Um, really nice to hear what, what people feel they need. I've just put up there kind of what we've been talking about, uh, maybe some of the things we haven't mentioned. So, um, so providing a service. So I'm here to provide that service. Um, telephone and face-to-face -face support. I'm the key worker for everyone with a CLL diagnosis. That's in the hospital and in the community. Um, so, liaising with the team, uh, we talk to other professionals about uh, what's happening with uh, people's care when they're in treatment, if they've come into the hospital, perhaps they've been admitted to another hospital, so I might speak to the team in the other hospital um, and attend the meetings about people's scans and treatment plans, um, also talking to people like dieticians, um, you know, OTs, uh, physios, if necessary. Um, we're point of contact for the GP. So obviously with the uh, watch and wait, I'm not particularly comfortable with watch and wait, um, but I prefer active surveillance. Um, but obviously everything in terms of um, health concerns that patients have in the community are dealt with by the GP. Um, so the GPs do often have gaps in knowledge about things like treatment, uh, things like a brutinib, and things of, has a lot of, uh, for instance, I don't know if anyone's on a brutinib here, but has um, interactions, and quite often um, the GPs are asking about prescribing and which and antibiotics, and um, just you know, so I'm that point of information for for. Patients, if I don't know the answer, I refer it to the, the registrars. Um, educating um, of staff, so other staff in the hospital that might need come in contact with CLL, I'd be the point of contact as well. Um, as I talked about signposting to other um, agencies, so, you know, Maggie's, the benefits agency, Macmillan, you know, anything that you might need, you know, if there's forms to fill in, things like that, and get involved with those. Um, so assessing needs, so trying to understand what's going on with someone and seeing if we can, if there's something we need to 
um, have some early intervention with managing side effects of, of, of drugs that they're taking and how we deal with them, whether they need to come in a bit earlier into clinic and be seen by Anna or one of the doctors. Um, Leanne was running a telephone clinic, which is really useful, actually, if you, you know, you, you're feeling very well and you don't really want to come into hospital to, to be seen by one of the consultants. Some people really prefer that. So the telephone clinic is a chance to have a conversation every six months or 12 months uh, with us and we can pass on any concerns to the doctors that we feel are pertinent. Um, and that's really useful actually um, to, you know, understand what's happening and have a chat about, you know, how everything's going, but without having to make that journey into the hospital, um, which, as we know, is not always that easy. Um, and uh, assessing uh, side effects and new symptoms uh, with the CLL, obviously, when we're talking about, you know, things changing with the CLL, if you're on the watch and wait and you're fine and the bloods are fine and they start changing, talking to me about, you know, is anything else happening? Are you having any night sweats? Are there any lumps and bumps? Are you having more infections that are being treated by, with antibiotics? Um, and basically trying to understand what the picture is of the disease progression. Um, and so just some, a minor thing really, but it comes up quite often about travel insurance. Um, we can help with that. I get recommendations all the time from people. Whenever someone says they're going abroad, I said, oh, what, where did you get your travel insurance from? Because it's quite good to know those things. Um, and... I can help with making appointments and amending them and, and referrals, so things like having scans and things like that. I chase those up, find out what's going on with those, because as we know, they can get lost. And um, not so much myself, because I'm kind of only holding the fort, but Leanne certainly has been developing the service since she's been in post and trying to drive new initiatives. And I think particularly the holistic needs assessment um, is something that we want to kind of do more of and, and I think that will be something that will be, um, you know, something we'll be trying to drive in the next um, year or so. Um, and also, patient knows best. I don't know if anyone uses that. I think some people probably do here, yeah. Which is really good, actually, a, a way of contacting us and you can see your um, blood results online. Um, it's something that's been around for about a year and we've just had the funding extended for another year so it's carrying on um, but I think in the future it would be better to be managing things like that so it's just like a, a web portal where you can have access to myself Anna the registrars other your GP can also sign up to it um, and it's it's just somewhere where you can have a discussion with us um, without having to see us so it's quite useful um, and the most important thing for me is kind of listening to what's, what's happening with you and hopefully being there to be able to support you in whatever way we can. Um, so that's kind of it. I did have a case study, but I think I'm probably about on time. Um, I was just kind of kind of give you an idea of kind of what I did every day um, because I think sometimes it can be a little bit like, well, okay, you've told me what you do, but what's your day like? What do, what do you actually do? I mean, generally, I'm... I'll give you five minutes. You give me five minutes, OK. <laughs> so um, I just... I'll put it on to the case study. Um, for, for some people, this is probably... You know, this, this is not obviously a picture of um, CLL that is necessarily familiar. So this is, this is a very complicated case in that um, a patient 70 years, years old was diagnosed with CLL and colorectal cancer in the same year. It's a, um, very unfortunate. Um, had surgery for the colorectal cancer and a, and a stoma fitted, so um, a colostomy bag here. Um, didn't recover, was very fatigued. Um, and so I arranged for him to come in and have an, an, an urgent transfusion um, turns out he had a new blood disorder as well to deal with. Um, and it was very much about me 
contacting him, giving him support, telling him what was happening, liaising with the colorectal team. We're trying currently, it's, it's happening at the moment, to organize some surgery for him to have the stoma reversed. And it's very complicated because of his blood counts, getting it in the right level for him to have the surgery. So I'm liaising with all the team, the consultants and the surgeon and talking about how we best manage it and also trying to support him and his family through a very difficult time. So quite very regular contact with him, maybe twice a week, um, talking to him about that. But obviously that is not necessarily a, a scenario that, you know, uh, many people find themselves in, but just to kind of understand that, you know, um, we, we have quite a sort of range of different patients that some of them, like this gentleman, obviously takes quite a lot of time to be sort of liaising, understanding what his needs are. Um, so I answer emails and phone calls and I will go to clinic and after clinic, there's usually quite a lot of things to follow up on, writing to people's GPs about new medications we might have prescribed, um, phoning patients after the clinic to make sure that they've understood what was said and that they're able to complete the actions that might be from the clinic. Um, so that's about it. Um, I'll, I'll wrap it up, but if there is more questions um, from anyone, I'm going to be around. I'm going to stay probably till, till four to the end, so please feel free to come up and give me your questions. If, if there's specific things you want to find out about um, treatments and things or um, questions that you've got maybe for the doctors or anything like that, I'm happy to make a note of those and follow them up when I'm back on Monday. Um, but yeah, I hope that was helpful. Does that give you an insight into what I do? Yeah, it was really nice to meet you all, so thanks very much. Thank